Okay, guys, thank you so much. All right, we just passed uh, half past 10. Thank you very much for taking the time, guys, to be able to listen to um, our panel today about scaling solutions. So uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Kevin Liu. I'm here from Hong Kong. Thank you very much for Miami's warm welcome alongside the CTH and the IDEG team. And again, graciously, thank you for all uh, for attending our two-day conference at the Miami Web3 Summit. So um, today we've got something that's going on. It's very special. It's about layer two, the battle for scalability. And you're going to hear from some of the youngest, smartest minds in the game. You've heard from Pomp today. You've heard from Tim Draper. You talk, he's talking about builders. He's talking about next level decentralization. And how do you get the tools to actually do it? And you'll be able to hear it from the three individuals here today. Um, so, but before we do that, just so I can get a sense and the temperature of the room for our, uh, for our speakers today, uh, who is an investor? Put up your hands very quickly. Who's an investor? All right, CTH team, <laughs> photographic memory, keep an eye out. I want to see you guys around the tables. All right, so who is an entrepreneur? Please, hands up. You can put your hands up. Okay, thank you. And then thirdly, who is a technical developer in the room? Hands up. Wow, a lot of action down there. Okay, so you guys, hopefully you guys got to see that, all right? So now you know who you're talking to, right? So I'm pleased today to be able to have Thomas uh, to my right here uh, of Superposition, Claire Zhang, uh, Westratos, and Morgan of Ave Labs, Ave Labs, right? Excellent. Okay, so uh, a little bit about a sort of personal introduction. I'm here from Hong Kong. I helped build the Hong Kong digital asset market, and I want to be able to kind of say, Thomas, look, you used to work in AWS, cloud infrastructure, right? Ah, uh, very close. Google Cloud. Google Cloud, yeah. sorry. Nemesis. Okay, yeah. So tell, me, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're doing at Superposition and, uh, you know, how your background and your sort of tech uh, cloud infrastructure background is now uh, helping to support what you're doing at Superposition. Please, go ahead. Yeah, sure, I'll keep it brief. Um, my name's Thomas, I live in Austin, Texas. I run technology at Superposition and Concordia. And what we're building at Concordia is maybe best described as a layer 1.5. What it does is unifies all the different blockchains out there so they can work in concert as one single mega application. Uh, and at Google, I worked on scaling cloud infrastructure for a few years and had a great time. Great. Claire? Hi, everyone. My name is Claire Zhang. I'm currently the head of marketing and the communication at Stratos. Uh, at Stratos, we're currently building the decentralized cloud uh, that's provide uh, self-balanced, scalable, reliable, decentralized storage, computation network, and database plus blockchain as an all-in-one solution that's able to enable different kind of decentralized applications and builder to really scale and also to enjoy the true decentralizations, privacies, and safeties. So uh, really look forward to the dive into like all the scaling solutions we're going to talk about today. Thank you. And Morgan, from Ave Labs, I guess you know, there, there's Ethereum, there's consensus. That's like building the enterprise level. Uh, is that that's my understanding? Is that how you would describe it? Yeah, sure. So um, just by way of background, I'm Morgan Kropetsky. I run uh, institutional business development for Avalabs. Um, Avalabs is a software company and the licensed service pro provider to the Avalanche Foundation from which the Avalanche blockchain was launched. Um, just, uh, just by a bit of background, uh, Avalanche is a layer one proof of stake EVM compatible blockchain. Um, it is a smart contract platform for decentralized applications um, across a variety of different verticals and use cases. So DeFi, gaming, NFTs, enterprises, exchanges and wallets, and institutions. Uh, from an Avalabs perspective, um, we build infrastructure and tooling to really kind of drive the growth and adoption of the Avalanche blockchain. Uh, and from a business development perspective, uh, we work with and partner with a variety of different partners and companies across many different industries to ultimately help them to participate in, to use, or ultimately to build on the Avalanche blockchain. And, and we can get into kind of uh, how, how we plan to scale in the future, I'm sure, in this panel. Great. So in summary, uh, whether you're building a stable coin, a D-app, whether you're building the next metaverse, whatever you're building in the decentralized economy, you need the tools, and they provide the tools. Is that, is that a good summary, Thomas? I'd say so, yes. So, so the battle for scalability is no one size fits all, right? How are you guys approaching it from scaling so you get 
Yeah. If I could take a minute to just back into this problem of scalability from first principles. Bitcoin, it's kind of slow. Does anyone know how many transactions you can do per second with Bitcoin? Yeah, <laughs> seven, seven. <laughs> you can't really change the face of modern finance at that speed. So why don't we just do this? You could create a thousand different Bitcoin networks. You can do this. The, the software is about as complicated as WhatsApp. You can just run it on your computer, and I have a thousand of these. And you mine some Bitcoin 732, you mine some Bitcoin 19, I mine some Bitcoin 8. And just like that, we now have 7,000 transactions per second. So why isn't this happening? I mean, it kind of is with the Litecoins and the Dogecoins and all the other forks of Bitcoin that are working out there. But the end result is that if you're going to take your Bitcoin 732 and swap it for my Bitcoin 3, there needs to be some intermediary in the middle. We could set up some, some clearinghouse that said, you know, one for one, I'll take your coin and swap it with mine, and they all become fungible with each other. But what you just lost was that quality of trustlessness. You have to hope that the clearinghouse is going to actually honor this exchange. But, and this is what's really at stake with scalability, you can crank up those TPS, you can have more transactions, you can have more throughput, but how long does it take for a Bitcoin transaction to settle? How long does it take for it to be final, for it to really get from A to B? That's another metric entirely, and in Bitcoin, it's something like 30 minutes, last time I checked. As you keep adding more horizontal scaling, you can have more throughput, but it's sort of like Tragically, every time you want to add a new lane to a highway to get more cars going through it, you add another stoplight or another toll booth, and that toll booth needs another currency so you can pass through that toll booth. What layer twos do is come in at this highway problem by building these feeder roads where you have other traffic moving on this arterial and they need to merge into the main highway. But these are feeder roads, kind of like what you have in California, where there are stoplights also on the feeder roads. So you have all these souped up cars that are going, you know, maybe there's Lamborghinis, they can move really fast, and they all bunch up on the feeder and have to wait their turn to get in on the main road. I, I, I'm bringing this up because a lot of statistics get thrown around with scaling. This blockchain will say, and we have low fees and fast transactions, but the thing you want to be mindful of is how long does it take for a transaction to be finished? How long does it take for it to merge into Ethereum? How long does it take for it to be final? This is actually a very, very difficult, nuanced, subtle problem with trade-offs and minefields all around us. And, and we'll get into how Concordia addresses it, maybe, but I, I just wanted to introduce this topic with that analogy. Wow, okay, that's a great analogy. Thanks very much. Uh, Morgan, how are you guys actually planning to address that? Sure, so I think um, a lot of what we're working on is actually similar to and um, kind of feeds off of what you just described, Thomas. Um, so from an avalanche perspective, there's really two major factors that differentiate the platform compared to other L1s that are interrelated and also kind of speak to the um, plan by which we've always like planned to, to scale, which is horizontally through adding additional block space through subnetworks or subnets. Um, so the first major differentiator is the avalanche consensus mechanism uh, behind Classical and Nakamoto. It really is the third ever um, truly novel consensus mechanism. Um, and the way that it works at a high level is just through the repeated random subsampling of nodes to gather confidence that a transaction is valid. And this happens extremely quickly uh, regardless of the number of validators on the network. Um, and what it also enables is the concept of sub-second transaction finality, which, Tom, to your point, um, is extremely important, particularly for financial services use cases, for example. Um, and the other kind of really big differentiator is the concept of subnetworks or subnets, um, and it is our horizontal scaling solution. And so technically what subnets are are just subsets of the primary network validators coming together to reach consensus on a state of blockchains. 
Um, but practically what this means and the way that we talk about this with different enterprises and institutions is that they're really just application specific blockchains. And so whether you're a gaming company, whether you're a government agency or a financial institution, you know, we realize that you will have very specific and distinct kind of uh, parameters that you want to kind of apply to your particular use case. And so subnets allow you to effectively customize your blockchain across a variety of different parameters, including privacy, permissioning, uh, which gas token you use, which virtual machine you build on, um, and then if you have certain restrictions, who your validators are and where they're based jurisdictionally. So all of these things are able to be kind of customized as it relates to the particular use case, but all powered by the avalanche consensus. Um, and then the other thing to kind of uh, note, um, in addition to that is if you are a subnet, validator, you also need to be validating the primary network, which kind of creates a nice positive feedback loop in terms of the, the broader security of the primary network. Okay. Great. So it, it sounds like what I'm hearing, at least from you two, there's no one chain to rule them all yet. I mean, would you agree with that, Claire? Um, I think they both touch base on scalability from the layer one perspective, which is great. Um, however, I think over the years, I think layer one or public chains have proven to be a great system for uh, public ledgers and transactions. Yet, uh, if we're looking at the current Web3 or crypto, like kind of a landscape that, um, like, you cannot store all data on blockchain, right? And also, as we're continually growing different kind of de decentralized applications, um, it has shown a greater demand in terms of storing different kind of uh, data, which is either structured or unstructured from a JPEG to a video and other format. So. Our approach at Stratos has kind of differed from uh, we are trying to address the scalability issues from the fundamental data ar architecture. That's why we designed this four components uh, as services for all those uh, um, developers and builders that they can customize just like how you're uh, these days using AWS to build a, a Web2 applications. So, uh, this is kind of our approach uh, right now that uh, through a decentralized storage that we are able to undertake a hundreds millions of like storage demand uh, through different kind of applications, whether you are a social fi projects, a game fi projects, or uh, an NFT marketplace that carries out both pictures, videos, music in the near future. Yeah. Got it. What do you think, Thomas? Is it interoperability? <laughs> What does inter interoperability mean for you? Right, right. Is there one database to rule them all? This is maybe a, a spicy point to make, but all a blockchain is at the end of the day is a database. And nobody's thinking that we can run Etsy and Spotify and uh, you know, Facebook all on one database. You can have engineers that keep souping this thing up and making it faster and faster and faster, but we've already solved this problem of scalability, and it's that you have many databases, and they're all chatting with each other. When you get on the internet, n nobody's trying to do this problem where you have one mega computer that can be all things for all people. You have many computers, and they all do their own job. Again, you can start a blockchain. Anybody can. You, you can meet me in the lobby with your laptop, I'll set you up, you can run your own Ethereum network, and it's yours, and nobody can be noisy and, and, and crowd you out on your traffic. You can have all the throughput to yourself. But what have you scaled when you've done that? It's faster, it's private, but have you scaled Web3? What we need to ask ourselves, and this is how we think about it with Concordia, is, is there's infrastructure and there are applications. And when we're gonna have mass adoption, infrastructure needs to just be infrastructure. Infrastructure shouldn't be a brand. Just like the fuel injector in your car is nothing that only, uh, only but enthusiasts actually know the brand of. Scaling is not about doing things faster with your money. It's about doing more interesting things with your money. What's wonderful about DeFi is that you can connect different applications together in crazy daisy chains where everyone can talk and everyone can communicate and everyone can exchange anything. But if you keep smashing Humpty Dumpty into smaller and smaller pieces with more and more blockchains, the scaling is kind of a Pyrrhic victory because you create this balkanization where no one can talk to anyone anymore unless you have, I don't know, bridges, I guess they're called. But then there are weird trust assumptions that come in there. 
So when we're coming at this as investors, as developers, as, uh, as entrepreneurs thinking about which chain to call our home, I would caution us to think about the trade-offs when it comes to what you can use it for, whether there'll be foot traffic there and whether it'll be connected to the larger Web3. We've sort of discovered USB cables and everybody's creating a new one because there's quite a pot of gold if you make the USB cable that's the preferred. But right now we're creating this world where everybody needs to lug around 30 different USB cables. What Concordia's approach is, is not to create a new kind of cable, but a super hub that all of your different cables can plug into so that finally all of our different appliances can talk to each other. So no, I wouldn't say there's one chain to rule them all. What we need is a big kumbaya come together moment where the chains that exist are now working together in concert. Hallelujah. Bye and bye. <laughs> So, so Morgan, like, uh, you know, Thomas is talking about fragmentation of uh, liquidity. We kind of see this sometimes in, you know, sort of financial markets, also in crypto markets. Um, but now, uh, perhaps, maybe, is it a fragmentation of infrastructure, of user interest? Is this, you know, there, there's uh, perhaps maybe not one chain to rule them all. But again, like, how does Ave Labs look at uh, with that integration and that interoperability? Sure. So, um, I mean, I think at this point, we're still super early on in terms of, um, getting a sense of which solution or solutions are going to win out. Um, I think that also, um, you know, m generally uh, we believe that we are in for a multi-chain future, um, and whether that is, you know, particular chains getting traction for particular use cases or industries, I think that's, you know, obviously yet to be seen. Um, but generally, that is kind of the direction that we're going in from a multi-chain perspective. Um, at Avalabs, obviously, in addition to that, we believe in a multi-subnet future. Um, I think down the line, um, there will be many, many, many subnets, thousands of subnets that um, are running kind of in parallel. Um, you might have gaming-specific subnets, which currently we have two kind of in full production on, um, in, and, um, you know, in addition, you may have a company-specific subnet. You may have a part of a company-specific subnet, but I think the key to that, and Thomas, what you kind of alluded to as well, is the interoperability and communication between chains and between subnets um, if, if and when it's required. Um, and so we're very much working on a cross subnet messaging protocol to be able to kind of enable that. Um, but you know, obviously we're very excited in terms of uh, what, what we're building. Great, okay, so what you ultimately heard there is, um, you know, don't get a Ferrari if you need to move a ton of sand, right? Kind of get the technology that's suited uh, for what your purposes are. And then in Claire, in your case, Stratos, what is actually Stratos really built for, right? Is it you, you, it's data? So, so what kind of decentralized economies is Stratos looking to lift and build upon? Uh, so as an infrastructure project, what we're really seeing ourselves role in this whole growing ecosystem is really to providing this solid infrastructures. And of course, we welcome collaborations with different kind of layer one chains to really grow their ecosystem and support different kind of decentralized applications. So we're gonna, like one of the things that we're starting is the decentralized storage plus our content delivery network. So. Uh, once we're launching our mainnet early next year, major things that we're gonna pushing is to onboard different kind of NFT projects or video streaming projects that has such strong needs in terms of high bandwidth, fast speed, uh, uh, queries, stuff like this. So I think in our eyes that the success of as an infrastructure, it's really about how to provide this uh, reliable, safe, and scalable kind of foundation for the whole industry. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll Cool. All right, uh, we're about one minute 30. Uh, perhaps maybe uh, everyone's battling for sort of technical, uh, let's say, dominance, right? But of course, at the end of the day, uh, you're looking for clients. How do you guys think about either how existing chains, popular chains, how you guys are planning to actually incentivize and attract users to build on your chain? Because, you know, it sounds like you guys have good products. How do you go uh, get uh, people to build upon it? Have you got a thought about that? Hmm. People ask me what phone I use, and I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I think the average user uses apps. They don't use blockchains. Nobody wants to think about infrastructure. People want to think about apps and use apps. So when, when, when asking me oh, which blockchain is going to be the best, sort of like, who cares? Let them all work together. Let them all duke it out. The important point is that someone else is trying to bring everything back together under a big tent, and that that competition can go on amongst the enthusiasts 
but we make sure to remember to build a unified experience for the rest of us. Great. Um, Claire? Um, for me, uh, I think that I really hope that one day we don't have to re-explain what decentralized storage is, but people feel safe where their data and content are being stored. So um, in our approach that our go-to-market would be first Web3 applications, but at the same time, because we are undertaking this enterprise levels of data processing kind of scales, so we really want to help Web2 companies with existing users to help them bridge to Web3 uh, seamlessly. Yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely seen that. Web 2 companies definitely trying to step, perhaps maybe not straight into Web 3, but definitely Web 2 and a half, and then maybe there's, uh, th there's some partnerships there. Uh, Morgan, what about you? Uh, what do uh, you think about that? Sure. Yeah. So um, for us, I think we're working really hard to make it as easy as possible for any individual or company to launch their own subnet, and so we're working very hard on the concept of a subnets as a managed service uh, model. Um, and you know, and talking to different enterprises and institutions, I think the major kind of value proposition of Avalanche is really the fact that it kind of gives you the best of both a public permissionless chain with an enterprise blockchain that a lot of them uh, have become familiar with over the years. And so Avalanche kind of provides, provides the best of both in that way. Great. Okay, look, I, I think we're pretty much on, uh, out of time. Uh, just if you guys can all just please give a hand for our three panelists today. Very enjoyable panel.